Hi, I'm Mark Lewis from Canonical, and I'm here today to talk about chiseled Ubuntu containers. For a long time, developers have loved the experience of working with Ubuntu-based containers. Who wouldn't? It's a container that is most of the operating system useful bits without the kernel and a couple of other bits and pieces you probably didn't need. This makes it extremely extensible, which means just about any problem can be solved, allowing for enormous amounts of innovation. That's great. What happens when you move to production? And that's where this diagram I've drawn up here starts to come into play. Folks who care about production resource utilization, security postures, and of course the maintenance of images come along and say, hey, security kind of is better if you've got a smaller container with less in it. And so you end up with this inverse proportion of extensibility which supports innovation versus security at production time. The way people are addressing it today is to build things like distroless containers, where effectively rather than building a container from a whole lot of packages, or even picking up one that is constructed like that, they build a container from scratch. They go away and find all the files they need to actually execute their software. It is a remarkable task, and well done to everyone who does it, but it is very much the field of experts, and it means that it makes it harder for all of us to really achieve that security grade whilst not necessarily being expert in our capabilities. At Canonical, we looked at this problem and thought, wow, OK, so we're kind of the source of the problem with our containers, but at the same time, we can fix this. What is it that we're really trying to do? We're trying to build secure production containers. And so we said, let's assume we can solve the build containers with the minimum number of files problem, which I'll get to in a second. What else would we want to do? And that's where it becomes interesting. We said, well, a container at runtime probably shouldn't have any privileged users. We should have already worked out all the interdependencies. We should understand our microservice ar architecture. And really, privileged users, probably a bad thing. When things go wrong, it's not going to work out. We carried on in that vein and said, well, containers should be immutable, and particularly at production time. And so no package manager. And whilst we're at it, and this one hurts, there shouldn't be a shell either. You know, whatever it is you need to do through a shell, you should have thought of in development time using other tools to egress whatever information needs to go out or ingress uh, your, your software or whatever other changes you need to make in. Right, that makes for a pretty secure container. I said I'd talk about files. Some of you will be familiar with the layout of Debian packages, which is, of course, what Canonical builds Ubuntu and, and our artifacts from. Um, they are a very rich packaging format. You have pre and post install scripts, which allow for changes to the operating system to make it more manageable, configuration related to that that can change the operating system that's specific to Debian, the binaries, configuration information for how the binaries execute, documentation that people can read about using software as well as perhaps even developing it. To that end, you can have for header files, code files, and of course, information about other dependencies. As long as we're thinking about making things smaller, we looked at this and said, hey, we can do better than this. This is very rich, and we're obviously going to keep it for uh, the operating system and, in fact, developer containers. But if we're building production containers, we don't need scripts and configuration because we're going to set them up when we build a container. We are going to keep our binaries. We'll keep our configuration of the binaries. We won't need our documents. We don't need headers and code, and we don't need package dependencies. We did this, for those interested, in a very simple manner by effectively creating YAML files that you can find on GitHub, which define precisely what you need to pull out of a package to create something called a slice. Slice is just a definition file of what goes into a package that we need at production time in a container. And we can compose these, as Canonical does, using a tool called Chisel. Um, inside Docker files. So what are the outcomes? Does it work? The answer is it's spectacular in, in, in the pull-through effects it has. So we've obviously designed secure by design containers that are really small with a minimal attack surface, but we also see a, a, a huge improvement in secondary benefits of that. So for instance, cache times. You know, how long does it take the container to get across my network from the registry to my Kubernetes? Perhaps how long does it take for these things to actually spin up? Um, and of course, 
How many of them can I pack in at production time? And for all of those things, we see 20 to 25% improvements in performance, which is remarkable, particularly for any kind of software that's run at scale, which of course is the problem we're trying to solve, production kind of software. To that end, we've kind of really addressed the problem of security, size, and finding that balance between developers who can then have containers that are based on the same thing at production time. There is a hidden benefit. I talked about pull-through benefits. There's a hidden benefit to this, which is we haven't actually lost these packages at all. They still remain. So as Canonical patches your favorite applications and Ubuntu, that software gets put into our repositories, kicks off builds, they then generate packages. Well, all of our CI pipelines for these artifacts will in fact be kicked off. And so what you get is the benefit of the package build system in terms of delivering the maintainability of software, which we know from Ubuntu's ESM and LTS offers, also pulling through into containers. And that's a remarkable thing, because now we've said, hey, you can have extensible containers at development time, which evolve to secure containers for production time, which haven't got the problem that you normally do with distroless around the whole business of constructing and maintaining a file-based uh, container, because ultimately we're using our chisel tool to pull together packages, but only the pieces we need through the slices. I've told you the benefits. Hopefully, this has inspired you. Please go and look at various uh, repositories, including Docker, ECR, DoD, Zion Bank, at our containers. Thank you for listening and watching. I'm Mark Lewis, speaking for Canonical about chiseled Ubuntu containers. And I hope to see you again soon to talk about some of the next exciting features we're adding.